I'd like to say in the dungeon, but there was about an hour and a half of preamble before getting into the dungeon. Um, mostly them going over maps, collecting certain pieces of equipment, um, just a few bits here and there. It it, it worked. It was it, it wasn't bad or anything. It was just wow, that took way longer than I expected just to get to the dungeon entrance. And then they go to the dungeon entrance. The entire time, Zed, the cleric, is using the scrying orb he's now got to try and get a bead in on the dwarf. And basically, I had him overuse it. Well, he overused it, in my opinion. So now he's just getting images of this black god. I, I want to say black god, I mean Malar, the, the god of black wolves, who is the enemy of Fenrisulfa. So anyway, they finally get to the dungeon entrance and there is a couple of dead rangers. And Roboto goes through their pockets looking for anything and he just finds some money and he puts it back because Celadine goes like, Are you looting the dead? What? No! At which point, Narlok does loot the dead. They don't need it. And the party go down. And down they go, down they go. And they rolled really well on their sneak checks and I rolled really poorly on my perception checks so they come across eight sleeping hyenas. Uh... I've got to say, party tactics, they did very well. Um, yep, yeah, they dealt with the hyenas without too much trouble. Uh, good bit of strategy using a combination of illusion magic mixed with um, outright combat. Across the board, they all did fine. Uh, they carry on, and they come into... That old DM joke of um, party at a doorway... And you're in your head screaming, just go through the doorway! While they're umming and ahhing about things. I think they spent about half an hour, real time, trying to work out if there was anything in the room before going into the room. Eventually they go into the room, there's nothing in there. <laughs> they did everything. They threw a stone in there. They threw um, everything you can imagine. The room was full of pebbles by the time they got in there. Pebbles that they threw. Anyway, they moved through and they're going very carefully. So I only managed to catch one of them in my trap, which was a cobweb. Not nothing, nothing ecstatic, but they all panic, which is what I wanted them to do. And they snuff out their lights. They're now down three torches. And Celadine snuffed out her um, candle cantrip. So they're in pitch blackness waiting for a spider attack that doesn't come. They get out, and I give them the choice. You can either carry on to the next floor, or there is a cobwebbed doorway. You'd think the trap would be obvious, but they... Zed the cleric puts the torch straight into the... I don't know what he expected to happen. He got bit by a giant spider. He put the torch straight into the cobweb. Om. <laughs> so, fight with a spider. Over fairly quick. A few of them took some poison damage, but everyone came out. Mostly unscathed. A couple healing potions down. They find some crap loot, a few rubies, gemstones, maybe a sword or two. Nothing particularly impressive. Party carries on. Get to the next floor down. And that's when they start to sign they're going to start exploring. See, they went a beeline on that first one. I thought that was how things were going to be. And that's kind of how I've structured my maze, my um, dungeons now. Because I originally built them like an interconnected cavern system. But they just took a beeline for their route. So now they are getting dungeons that are almost exclusively mazes that go in and out of each other. So, good thing they've got that map. But let's see how that goes. So they're walking their way through and they're going in different directions to see where things are. Uh, they find a trophy room. Not much in there. Uh, they find a small alchemy lab that's been constructed to produce soaps and salts and things for baths. Okay, uh, Celadine instantly just steals everything, just crams it all into a bag of holding. It's like, this is for later. It's like, it's the first time this character has done anything even remotely morally, not even apprehensible or dubious, just immoral, I suppose, which is very strange for a DD and d character. But it's the first time she's gone, this is all for Celadine, <laughs> into the bag. Um... And they carry on, and they wind up getting into a putrid bathhouse. Like, it's not putrid because of anything that's in the water, it's just the water's stagnant. Most of them roll badly on the constitution checks. There, they're vomiting. Someone manages to change the water. 
it's all clean and lovely now. Isn't that nice? And they're all trying to work out what the fuck is going on, which is hilarious because I don't know what the fuck is going on. I built this dungeon. Basically, I drew up the map, which was the maze. And then in each room and each corridor, I did a random roll based on the Dungeon Master's Guide for 1E and a little bit from 5E. And that just gave me some random rooms that they came into. It was like, okay, okay. Anyway, walk into corridor. Celadine decided to use her uh, Dispel Illusion spell. Absolutely fine. Dispel Illusion. Most of the rooms she went in, no illusions. Corridor they walk into. Initially looks burnt. Dispel Illusion. It's not burnt. There is no ash. There is no um, decrepit or derelict boxes. There is a very nice hallway that looks like it would be somewhere... You'd sit outside like a head teacher's office. And there's a golden statue of Fenris Ulfur's wolf. I'm surprised they didn't take that. <laughs> but, Celevi. Um, they... Celadine only has the spell for like five minutes, so she winds up going into the next room ahead of the party. Squishy Mage, head of the party, should have seen what was happening. Six goblins playing poker. I'm ready for them to fight. I'm ready for a charm. She decides to try and pretend like she's the waitress and say, Drinks, gentlemen, in Goblin. You know what? If she'd rolled a little better, it would have worked, but the rolls just weren't there. And the goblin's like, Oh, yeah, we'll have a beer, wine for a second. Wait a minute, we don't have a waitress, and they pile in attack. Attack goes through, it is a massacre with these goblins, and a few will get... To be honest, the most damage dealt to the party was dealt by the party from a critical fail from Roberto, which caused him to stab um, Narlock. Narlock goes for a couple of intimidation checks right on the last one, and now they've recruited a new goblin by the name of Gring who has only got that name because I started voicing him like a comical um, Mexican accent. It's like, he don't like these. So they love this character, um, ask questions, get ideas on the map, find out about a massive chasm that they will not be able to pass. So they send him on their way with a letter for uh, uh, the mayor, and then they continue along. And they're following the map as best they can, and they come into a treasury room with absolutely gorgeous set of typical evil villain armour. It's like, ooh, this must be the big bad evil guy's armour that he didn't wear in the fight. So they start casting spells and working out what's going on. It's like, ooh, this is really valuable. At which point they touch it, and that was what I wanted them to do, because it's a trick room. It's a trick trap room. The trap, the second that that oak was activated, everyone else... In the room, so everyone who didn't touch it had to give me a dexterity check. Celadine passed, Roboto and Narlock failed. They both took D4 fall damage. Not much, just a bit of an annoyance. A bit more of an annoyance seeing as Roboto in the previous session had actually sold his Ring of Feather Fall, which would have meant no damage for him. There we go. Definitely not punishing players for um, not thinking ahead. N Zed, meanwhile, who is the one who actually touched the armour, is rapidly ageing. half orc going from about early mid-twenties to, like, 70. So he looks like he should be dead. And the party are running around panicking, trying to work out what to do. Celadine helps Zed out of the room because they'll just get out and go. And as soon as they get out of the room, hey, Zed's young again. It was an inconvenient trick, but it had them all laughing and had them all very entertained. Just in one room. Carry on, Null Fight. Null Fight went very well. Very, very well. They were all ready for this. They used um, the room layout to their advantage. They used tactics. They used every spell they could get their hands on. It all just worked very nicely. And that's where that session ended. So, they're currently halfway through a dungeon taking a short rest after killing uh, three null, uh, five gnolls and three hyenas. So, next session, pick up, and maybe they'll find the fairy market. Bye!